please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, call to order the uh, Cerebral Planning Board. Beth, has this uh, been advertised in accordance with the Public Meeting Act? Yes, Chairman, it has. I ask for a, a roll call, please. Mr. Hukevich, Mr. Allegra, Mr. Bolton, Here. Mr. Elmire, Here. Ms. Ms. Larman, Mr. Muller, Here. Mr. Shaw, Here. Councilman Zabrowski, Here. Chairman Tai, Mr. Cornell, Here. Mr. Fowler, Here. Mr. Sordillo. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. Do we have any moral moralizations of uh, res resolutions? None. None. Uh, can we have? Uh, um, I need a acceptance for the minutes of last meeting. Motion to uh, accept the minutes with uh, minor modifications. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Communication agenda? None this evening. Thank you very much. That's easy. <laughs> Subdivision hearings. Uh, this evening, 2069 Highway 35 LLC preliminary and final major site plans. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this meeting, uh, this uh, application has been requested to be carried. Uh, they had not uh, uh, ready to proceed back before the board. Uh, that means uh, the next dating it's, it's scheduled for is uh, for May 15th, 2024. So if anyone here is um, here to hear or speak on the application for 2069 Highway 35 LLC, please be advised your, your notice is now being provided that the uh, hearing will continue on May 15th. 2024 at this uh, in this room at 730 uh, and no further uh, public notice will be provided outside of uh, being notified here at this meeting now. I'm going to need a motion to make that uh, official. To uh, change that date. Motion. Second. We have a second having a motion made and seconded to change the date to May 15th. Uh, roll call vote. Mr. Bolton. Yes. Mr. Elmire, Ms. Larman, Mr. Muller. Yes. Mr. Shaw. Yes. Councilman Zabrowski. Yes. Chairman Tai. Yes. Okay. Old business, new business, administrative matters. Uh, this evening we have uh, the master plan process overview with Hire Gruel and Associates. Good evening, Chairman, members of the board. John Barry with Hire Gruel and Associates. Um, I'm a professional planner and have been working with the borough in several different capacities over the last uh, five or six years, represent the zoning board currently, and my firm has been working on the master plan updates. So we were requested to come to the board to introduce the process a little bit to some of the members who haven't been involved up to this point, who are um, recently appointed, and to give everybody else a refresher on what a master plan is, why it's important, and where we are in the process of, of the update right now. So for a, for a basic overview, the master plan functions as a legal document that's um, required for the foundation of zoning in the municipality, but it's also a general policy roadmap for the town and how it makes its decisions, how it's gonna invest its resources in different areas. So the, um, the land use law, the municipal land use law in the state calls for a master plan to contain certain components the most important of which is the land use element, which as I said, is the foundation for zoning. So you have your, your policy vision for the town, the land use element sets out where things can be built, different zones, what kinds of uses are permitted in those zones, how large things can be, et cetera. Um, and then that gets translated into the, inf the law, the ordinance, the zoning ordinance um, by the governing body of the town. So the planning board's role is to guide that vision and adopt the master plan as a policy document. Um, so right now, what we're working on is an update to the land use element, a new land use element for the borough, along with a circulation element that deals with transportation. So any road improvements, any new facilities that may be related to movement of goods and people throughout the town and a, a community facilities element 
which deals with different types of public facilities, um, touches on schools, touches on community centers, things of that nature. Um, the, uh, there are many other elements that could be part of a, of a master plan, but right now we're just focusing on those three. So the process really kicked off last year with the preparation of a re-examination report. The law calls for towns to re-examine their master plans at least every 10 years. So the last master plan that was done comprehensively for the borough was in 2013. Last year, 10 years later, the re-examination report was done and identified some of the recommendations that would be translated into full plan element updates. Um, the elements are, think of chapters in a book really, but they're, they're, they stand alone, but they also have a connection between them. Uh, and pretty much everything ties back at the end of the day in one way or another to the land use element. Um, so right now we have draft documents. My office has been working with both Jay and Mike on refining those documents, making sure that, that we're covering all of the pertinent aspects and reviewing the drafts that, are, um, that have been circulated. We're going to be um, in the next little while. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't tell you exactly how long, but we're in the process of finalizing those, those draft documents for public review and review by the full board. Um, in the meantime, I think there's a desire to create a subcommittee of the planning board that would help refine and finalize those documents, take the draft work that my office has done, the recommendations that Jay and Mike have provided, and bring anything else that the, the board may wanna see into that so that we can wrap up those drafts and then move forward with the public review process. Um, during the re-examination process, we did conduct a digital survey and there were several public meetings that um, were open to the public for comment. And we had outreach with some of the, the key municipal stakeholders, different officials throughout the town and so forth. Um, so that's where we are right now. The master plan um, process is, you know, we're fairly far along with the preparation of these elements. So we, I know we had the, the turnover with some of the board at the beginning of the year. We wanted to make sure that everybody's up to speed on the process itself and to know that there'll be some draft documents for review coming up pretty soon. And there'll be an opportunity for another round of, of public review before the board during a, a hearing for those. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. That, we start that a subcommittee. Have. When would you want to have those meetings? Uh, as, to, in, as far as how soon or time, um, time oh, or date? Time, time and, and, and evidently we'll have it here, but I mean, afternoon, evening? Um, I think my office is generally flexible. Um, if the board, if the subcommittee is available during the afternoon, it does tend to be less of a scheduling conflict for us just because we have many night meetings so um but we can we can try to coordinate um as, as needed all right for everybody that sits on the board is anybody interested uh, being the chairman i'm going to sit and we can have three other people on this subcommittee and all we're going to do is review what we're going to bring back to this board and then when that's done we're going to put it out for public correct Mr. chair i would like to be that's one That's two. Okay. That's three. Thank you very much, gentlemen. That wasn't too hard. Huh? That wasn't too hard. Little, little reluctant. Yeah, but well, that's all right. Well, you know, like two heavy hitters are on vacation. Oh, well, they should have been <laughs> chosen by default. They didn't no, that's show up. Right. No, I would never do that. I've become chairman of too many committees on that. You know, you're missing, you're it. Um, Okay, so you're going to get back to me on a timeline, and then we can d discuss. Is everybody good for the evenings or the afternoon? What would your preference be? Anything that works for you, Mr. Chair. Generally, night times are better, but. All right, we'll try to do it at night on like a Monday. When, what's your schedule? Are you, are you busy on Mondays or Tuesdays? or? We'll, we'll get together and, and find a, a common right. date because. Before we leave, I'll give you my business card with my name number on it. And you can okay. get in touch with me, all right? Great. Okay. Any other questions of the. Uh, Master plan? May, may I ask a question? Go ahead. Be my guest. So in my estimation, in I think a three square mile radius in our borough, there's two elementary schools, an upper elementary school for all the fourth and fifth graders, the middle school for all sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, high school, nine through twelve. We have the library, we have the only supermarket in the area, we have the main 
park in the area with all the facilities, two ball fields and a slew of commercial properties. And in my estimation, that has created a traffic Armageddon in the Bordentown, Ernston, Washington Road area. And I understand that Ernston Road is a county road, but we're not getting much help from the county mm -hmm. in dealing with it. And it's it's become it's become a nightmare. Um, and last last year, this board, in part, um, based upon the traffic conditions there, had recommended that the Board of Education not put a transportation center in that area to add 80 more buses to the road. My question is, can anything be done by this board in the reevaluation process to address this problem? Because it is a significant problem and I fear it's gonna get worse. So we're not getting into the specifics of a potential solution. Conceptually, now's the time to lay the, lay the groundwork. And one of the things we want to look at when we're setting the master plan up and getting it adopted is think about future, obviously. That's the whole point of planning. And think about how we can approach outside entities, whether it's the county, whether it's the state, you know, depending on the different circumstances, if it's the um, setting the stage for some kind of study or project to try to help alleviate a particular condition or problem. Anytime you have support for that in a municipal master plan, it goes a long way toward trying to get it kicked up the ladder, trying to get the funding that you might need for that kind of project. If it just comes out of the blue and it's never been talked about and, and doesn't have that kind of more institutional policy driven support, uh, it may be a little harder. But so now's the time to get those issues on the table. And as part of the subcommittee conversations, I think it, you know, it's something that we'd be happy to, to look into. No. Thank you. Any other questions? That's it. Thank you okay. very much. You're welcome. Uh, we have a memo from the municipal plat, uh, clerk on resolution 2024-25 referring to the Borough of Cerebral Planning Board in review of certain proposals and amendments to the Borough of Cerebral Landfill and Melrose Development Plan as reported to the Mayor and uh, Council. You want to speak on that? Mr. Chairman, that the board was involved with reviewing a redevelopment plan for a piece of property in Melrose and the landfill site on Journey Mill Road a number of years ago. That redevelopment plan was written around a, the proposed development of a power plant. There were agreements in place with that power plant. A plant they received planning board approval, and it fell through. Couldn't so the, re the finances. Uh, correct redevelopment agency received RFPs, and there's currently a proposal for the development of cold storage warehouse on that property. So the redevelopment plan amendments that are in front of you revised the previously adopted redevelopment plan to kind of tailor it to fit this proposed development. The attorney and the engineer for the applicant are present this evening. I thought it would be important just for them to give you kind of a quick overview on what they're proposing. That way you understand why the amendments are being made to the redevelopment plan. So <clears throat> you may take the cup. Name and state your name and firm. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jennifer Phillips Smith. I'm an attorney with Gibbons PC, and I am here today on behalf of the designated redeveloper for the landfill site, which is known as CPMD Journey Mill Road LLC. The designated uh, redeveloper was, in fact, awarded uh, this opportunity through an RFP process that was run through the borough and Sarah once it was determined that the prior plans were not able to move forward. Uh, we have entered into a redevelopment agreement with Sarah as a designated redeveloper, and that was in January of 2023. And with a purchase and sale agreement with the borough, the landfill is borough property. The borough is looking to sell it in order to take the landfill and return it back to an economic opportunity for the borough. Uh, that purchase and sale agreement was signed last year. Um, and as Mr. Cornell indicated, as part of the redevelopment agreement and the purchase and sale contract, it was... Uh, acknowledged that the current redevelopment plan does not permit cold storage warehouse, but that is what's being proposed. That's what was in the RFP. And so therefore that the redevelopment plan would need to be amended for the project to move forward. What you have before you this evening for a determination as far as consistency with the master plan is a proposed amendment to that redevelopment plan. The amendment was reviewed by Sarah, along with Sarah's uh, engineering and planning professionals. And it has a number of um, changes to it, 
primarily to allow cold storage warehousing to be a permitted use. Now note, it is only cold storage warehousing, not general warehousing, which cold storage warehousing is of a different type, usually more automated, lower impact as far as number of employees, et cetera. Uh, there's other changes just to address things like the height of the proposed building with mechanicals, um, to put lighting standards in place, to address some landscaping and stormwater standards. But we thought it would also be helpful to give you an overview of the proposed project. Now, keep in mind, we are going to have to come back to you. If the council does choose to adopt this ordinance, at that time, we can file a full site plan application and would come back before you with all the details on the proposed buildings and lighting and landscaping and stormwater. But we can show you a conceptual plan just so you can have an idea as to why this particular project is being proposed and why the redevelopment plan would need to be amended to fit it. So I'd actually like to ask um, Michael Stickle, who is an engineer with Colliers, to just give a quick overview of the location of the property and the proposed plans. Thanks, Jim. We'll be quick. I can um, oh, yeah, if you don't mind holding <laughs> <grab> my easel. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Jen. So the proposed development, um, as you can see on the board here, is located on a, it's about a 46 acre, uh, former US EPA Superfund site, known as the Sarahville Landfill Number Three. It's located just west of Journey Mill Road, uh, which you can see on the right side of the map there. Uh, it's just across from the intersection with Red Oak Lane. Uh, it's about a quarter mile north of Starland Ballroom and the VFW, and about a um, mile and a quarter north of Bordentown Road. And then on the other side, Washington Road is just over a mile to the north of the site. Uh, this site was delisted from Superfund in 2011, which was the beginnings of the original uh, power plant project mentioned before. The subject property is block 58, lots 2.01 and lot nine. Uh, lot nine is owned by the borough of Sayreville. Lot 2.01 is owned by the applicant. Uh, the property is in the eco-industrial redevelopment area within the landfill and Melrose redevelopment plan. So what's proposed at this site, uh, Jen, thank you for pulling up. This is our overall site layout. Um, the applicant's proposing to construct two cold storage warehouse buildings with trailer storage areas and other associated site improvements. Uh, this is proposed in two phases. Phase one is building one in the front along Journey Mill Road, the right side of the page. Uh, this is about a 250,000 square foot uh, footprint for the cold storage warehouse. That includes the freezer space, cold docks, and also office space. Uh, there's 88 parking spaces proposed, 36 loading bays, and 76 trailer parking stalls. And then phase two is in the, the back, the left side of the page, um, which is building two, which is just under 100,000 square feet. It's 99,520 square feet for a footprint, including freezer space, docks, and office. Um, this has 58 proposed parking spaces, 26 loading bays, and 40 trailer parking stalls. So access to this development is proposed from three driveways all along Journey Mill Road. First, at the north side, there is an ingress only driveway. Uh, ingress only because of site distance issues along Journey Mill Road. The central driveway, which is aligned with Red Oak Lane, is a full movement driveway, so both in and out. And the southern driveway, um, on the south side of the building there is a full movement driveway as well. Uh, other than that, there's stormwater management facilities proposed throughout, including small-scale bioretention basins, porous pavement areas, and a detention basin. Uh, everything is designed in compliance with the uh, DEP standards and JEC 7 colon 8. And then, yeah, utilities are proposed to connect to Journey Mill Road. Landscaping and lighting will be provided in compliance with the ordinance. And I think that's all I have.
So as I mentioned, those the details concerning lighting, stormwater, and everything like that will come back before you in full-blown site plans should the council adopt this ordinance. And as I also mentioned, this is part of a purchase and sale contract. Because this is borough-owned property, ultimately, should both buildings be approved, uh, the applicant would be remitting up to $23 million to the borough in connection with the acquisition of this property if both buildings are approved. Um, that is it for this evening from us, unless you have any questions. Any questions of the applicant? Oh, thank you very much for a concise uh, report. Mr. Chairman, what the board is, is being asked to do is confirm that this is consistent with the master plan. You're not approving the application. You're, you're basically looking at the changes to the redevelopment plan and, and confirming that they're consistent with your master plan. And instead of 18 uses, we now have 19 uses being cold storage as one. Correct. But also the power plant use that was previously allowed is being eliminated. eliminated. Correct. So that would be the 19th that was done. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. You have your ordinance 1024 in front of you. What's your uh, what's your desire? Do I have a motion to accept? Motion, Mr. Chair. We have a second before discussion. Second. Any discussion on this matter? If not, I'll take a roll call vote. Mr. Bolton. Yes. Mr. Elmire. Ms. Larman. Mr. Muller? Yes. Ms. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Councilman Zabrowski? Yes. Chairman Tai? Yes. Thank you. Do we want to do public portion first and then go into executive session? Okay, so we'll make a motion to open to the public. I need a motion to make it uh, open to the public. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Anybody like to speak before the board tonight? If you do, please come up, state your name and where you live. And just a reminder to the to the members of the public, um, we're not allowed to hear any testimony or comments or questions regarding any pending application that's uh, before the board that may have a public hearing coming up. That will be something that has to be heard when the public hearing is scheduled on that particular application. Okay, I understand that. Um, however, uh, well, so my name is Jennifer Edwards. I'm from 10 Vincent Street. Sorry, I just had like a coughing fit out of nowhere. Um, I, I just wanted to, on behalf of the residents of Sayreville, follow up on our request from two weeks ago, um, requesting a religious land use attorney um, to be hired to review and assist on the application um, for the Ernst and Road House of Worship. <clears throat> While um, I know that there are qualified people on this board, our concern is that they don't include uh, religious land use experts and it would be beneficial to have those experts to advise um, and help preserve as much quality of life for the surrounding properties and the rest of Sayreville, <clears throat> as this will um, obviously impact the entire town. Since there's a delay in, in hearing the application, and I know we still have two weeks to go, um, it would be great and time appropriate to bring on these professionals now if we can, and uh, to assist the town and demonstrate to the residents that everything is being done to secure the best possible outcome. If uh, the RELUPA lawyer exceeds the planning board's budget, it's my understanding that a resolution may be passed to request funds from the council. Um, and we would just like to request that that be considered. <clears throat> um, we believe obviously that the proposed location and the size, and I know we're going to repeat this, um, of the House of Worship present, uh, presents significant challenges and conflicts with the local code regulations and the borough's master plan as it is currently. Um, and as such, as such, sorry, a thorough uh, RELUPA review to assess the implications of moving forward with the application in its current form is warranted. Having an expert professional in religious land use law really uh, will be able to help the plan guide the planning board and uh, the community to make sure that it's a fair and transparent process for everyone involved. Uh, because transparency is vital regarding a project of this magnitude, we're also requesting independent studies be performed for traffic, environment, noise, light, and other impacts to the community. And we hope that the planning board will carefully consider our concerns. Thank you. We are. Jennifer, what was your address? Uh, 10 Vincent Street, Thank Carlin. You. 
Anybody else from the public? Well, I'd like to thank you for coming out tonight, and I'd like to thank you for coming as a group. It saves us a lot of trouble, and it's going to save us in the future if you could do that when, when this application becomes before us. We are in the process of uh, looking into hiring the attorneys and the traffic study. Um, the borough council has given us the okay. Mr. Chairman, my understanding is that there are funds in place to assist with a legal counsel, Relupa. The, if there's a traffic independent traffic engineer, the escrow fees posted by the applicant will be utilized to finance that expert. Okay, so that's where we sit. Is everybody happy with that? Okay. Uh, the one thing I'd like to caution everybody is that this is going to be a long process. We're going to make sure everybody gets a fair shot. Um, the one thing we have to do is when we hire this Lupa attorney is to pay attention to what they say. There's a rabbit hole here that we don't want to go down. So whatever it takes, we're here for the people of the town, but we also have to remember that everybody has rights to do what they think they can. So um, thank you again for coming as a group. It's going to save us as, as it, and we'll go from there. Anybody else under uh, Good and Welfare? If not, I'll take a motion to close public portion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Having no further ma oh, Second. Second. having no further ma matters before the public, we're going to go into executive uh, session so we can do some business that you asked us to do. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to read the resolution. Whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 12 B 1 through 9 permits the exclusion of the public from meeting in certain circumstances. And whereas the pl planning board is of the opinion that such circumstances currently exist and now therefore be resolved by the planning board of the borough of Saraville County of Middlesex in the state of New Jersey as follows. The public shall be excluded from discussion and closed session at the pub at the board's meeting on March 20th, 2024. The general nature of the subject matters to be discussed are as follows. Contract negotiations, professional services. Minutes will be kept and once the matter involving the confidential confidentiality of the above no longer requires that confidentiality, then the minutes can be made, made public. The board may take Official action of those items discussed in executive session upon completion of the executive session discussion entering back into open session. May I get a motion? Make a motion. Second. Second. Roll call. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No opposed. Okay. Um, looks Board like, looks like. I'm close the door. Here we'll close the
Okay, under closed session, we spoke about litigation that the uh, and and hiring traffic studies and and a lupa attorney. Um, I need a motion to accept the lupa attorney, uh, attorney at law, uh, MB Blum. Motion. Do I have a second? Well, I have a motion made and seconded. We'll roll call. All Mr. in favor? Uh, we we'll do roll, roll call. call. Yep. Uh, Mr. Bolton? Yes. Mr. Elmeyer? Yes. Ms. Larman? Mr. Muller? Yes. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Councilman Zabrowski? Yes. Chairman Ty? Yes. Great. And then the second? All right. I need a motion for the traffic study for Bright, Eng Bright View Engineering to, uh, to hire them. Mr. Chairman, let me just... They're not going to be performing a traffic study. They are going to be reviewing the documents, the traffic term. reports submitted okay. by the applicant. And yeah, they would be providing a report to correct. the board, but it's a review not, report, not, not a separate study. Correct. Okay. Yes. yes. Motion to accept. Having, having okay. said that, we need exactly. a second call. Uh, roll, call. roll call. Mr. Bolton? Yes. Mr. Elmeyer? Yes. Ms. Larman? Mr. Muller? Yes. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Councilman Zabrowski? Yes. Chairman Tai. Yes. Okay. So on the agenda, the next meeting is April 3rd. Okay. Mr. Chairman, that is, as we discussed earlier, the Majid Sadar Community Center House of Worship site plan. That's the only application on the agenda that evening. That's it. It's enough. <laughs> uh, open the public portion. We did that. Mm -hmm. um, I'll take a, a motion to adjourn. Motion, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much Aye. for a very good meeting. Thank you. We'll be in touch and let you know what we're going to do. Yes, I'll start working on that first. Thank you very much. Thanks.